Hello ladies and gents, welcome back to recording uh, casual games and whatnot against lower rated opponents and here we bumped into a uh, 2000 rated player so um, why does it not show the move? so it's not meant to is it? Um, and so I suspect London because that's what everyone does oh. Dear Lord, give me strength. So don't play chess like that. That's a very important start of your day. Although technically I can't really exploit it because he's desperate to play bishop f4 and transpose into the London. No matter what. I mean, it hurts me to watch this a lot because it's just uh, trying to kill the game before it even started. I really think that sometimes... Uh, ooh, uh, my mic is in the picture very badly. That's not good. I really do think that sometimes people just need somebody to tell them don't do this man it's not good for you okay so b3 was a bit of a lemon on queen b3 was probably the most decent way to try to um, you know fight for equality at least as black as white which I guess is the best you can get out of the London. I was thinking here, by the way, about knight d4 already, and maybe I should have played it exactly to discourage knight d2 because that hangs. So maybe uh, that was an inaccuracy on my part. Like, it's so tragic. I'm looking at rook c1, and if takes, takes, bishop a3 wins an exchange. Oh boy, wow. And I think it still is winning stuff for me. So take bishop a3, queen goes back, bishop... Jeez. Oh, Falling apart like Cadbury Flakes chocolate. But I'm not here to criticize my opponent uh, and their view on life and the likes, but more so about to explain how I avoid these problems, or what, rather what are the typical mistakes of certain levels. And I certainly wouldn't say that 2000 uh, would play like this, but... Uh, when you play an absolutely atrocious opening, then it doesn't matter what your relative strength is, you are going to struggle throughout life because it's just the way it is. I mean, if you are entering a running race and instead of running you decide to hop, then you can be called Usain Bolt or Michael Jordan or whatever you want to replace that with. You're not going to go too well. Okay, so takes, takes, bishop b2, rook d1, bishop c2, picks off the rook right away and because if I'm a little bit too lazy to think if I have a better choice which would likely be queen a4 I think I'm gonna go for it so queen a4 queen d1 bishop c2 queen e2 bishop <laughs> wow yeah I can't afford to be lazy I think it sends a bad message also, because of our policies to play the move that we think is the most likely to trigger resignation the fastest, therefore I play like this. But yeah, this is sad, man. This is sad. Now, I'm really tempted to take this. But take, 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 and then picking off one of these puts me an exchange and two pawns ahead. I mean, man. So if I take this, what would we do? What would he do? Would he play? I, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, maybe he will play rook, rook here then. And if I go back. <laughs> okay. I really don't know which one was the, the more accurate way to to score a win so I opted for this because I like to see this absolute cluster disaster of pieces here so yeah let's hope that this, this is gonna deliver the damage we are hoping to cause so what's the guy's story steady 2000 look at that I'm sorry that's classical I'm looking at the wrong one this is rapid, but that is quite steady too. Um, B5, I thought I would come in from here. Now threatening to win a queen as well. Mm. 
He's gonna play knight e5. I guess. I mean, I'm not, I haven't been very good at guessing his moves, but I also um, don't intend to be very good at guessing his <laughs> Okay, that's pretty much. Check there. Okay. I could have won a queen with knight d3 check. But the reason why I didn't do it, and I think that's quite actually quite a um, um, an interesting learning moment there. I didn't even think about doing that because that would have changed a very important trend in the game. The guy has been on the back foot. He can hardly find legal moves. Knight d3 would have cashed in, winning a queen for two minor pieces, allowing him to mobilize his whole army and to castle. Now, objectively, that could very well be the cleanest uh, victory ever for me, but it just changes the psychological trend to such where he was going to be far more inclined to fight. And I don't want him to fight. I want him to give up. That's the objective. I'm sitting here to win the game. Knight d3, in my opinion, would have delayed my win. Right now I'm expecting resignation at any given moment because he can constantly feel that the screw is just getting more and more tightened on him. And now when he feels that there is a hope to castle, now I'm going to mow down all his pieces with checks. And so it turns out that I have won far more, incomparably more material than by uh, just uh, getting the queen. Like now I took already a rook, a piece, a queen is hanging, a bishop is hanging. Like it's actually quite uh, tragic how I'm hitting everything with check because the white king has to stay on the queen. So for example, the king f1 is not possible. This is going to be the moment of resignation, by the way. So yeah, all of this or rather none of this would have happened if I had gone like, oh my God, I can win a queen. Yeah, I can, but is this really the best I can do here? So it's quite ironic that I just uh, ignored the threat of knight d3 check and played a6, which probably wasn't a good move. Castle should have been it, but I wanted to stop the uh, check. And he plays on. Wow. Okay. So I have no idea what this guy is on, but uh, now I'm a rook and a piece up. And last time I checked, that wasn't a good setup. So yeah, that was that was a very interesting uh, way to to exploit, in my opinion, the full potential in the position. Because now he can't play a move. Like imagine he goes up. Maybe Queen E3 was a better way to do it. Because now, so if I take on here, he can take this. Then again, I have Knight E4. Yeah. All right. So he gave up, uh, which is fair. Let's go into lobby, but I might go into a rematch if he wants to, if I can't find anything in the lobby. Okay. 1500 blitz. Let's do that. Let's see what if, sorry, 1433. Let's see how they do. D5, the nonsense opening. So this is not unusual at uh, 1500 level that they try something gambity that has the promise of, you know, catching uh, even a higher rated opponent off guard, which he may have done here because knight c3, bishop b4, bishop d2, he can take, take, right? So do I need to take and then knight c3 so bishop b4 can be met with this check? That's kind of cool. At the same time, I'm a bit reluctant to take this because it extends the bishop's diagonal. But I like the idea that I have this check if uh, he wants bishop b4. I'm also proud of myself for that for the first time in 17 years, I didn't just play some garbage, but I actually started thinking. And therefore, I didn't fall behind against an opening against which I should really not fall behind. So now he's just dead because we are a pawn up. But more importantly, he can't castle and I've got two bishops. Now, I could take this, and maybe I should, but I'm thinking that development is more important. After all, as the author of a uh, whole anti-chessable course of development, I think I should stick to my guns. This just feels like a half move that doesn't give any value to me. 
not even in material terms because then the pawns are separated whereas now instead of grabbing a pawn that really doesn't add anything to me i had i played two developing moves and i think he blundered on Passon, but uh, he was already falling apart here so queen e7 check was what i expected with take taking that's when bishop f4 and its meaning is revealed so again i'm not taking this because i'm after the king so i'm going to go rook check next and again perhaps i was lazy and i should have taken that but uh i am always always 120 percent focused on the enemy king especially especially when wanting to finish a game against a lower rated opponent who walked into mate now so I don't think this is stoppable now. That was quite cool. I like that game because of... Um, that's a sexy checkmate too. Um, no, I didn't mean that. I meant analysis board. So uh, did I play this opening right is my only question. So queen e2, knight f5. Yeah, I did. I'm so proud of this move because I nearly played knight c3 here. And after bishop b4, I thought it was less clear. Take, take, uh, oh, sorry, no, I have to take, they have to take, and then back. And this is exactly what I prevented by playing uh, D first. So that now I have to take knight c3, bishop b4 is not playable because of the check. I'm impressed, I, I have to say, I'm, I'm cool, I'm, I'm pretty cool with that one. I'm usually far more careless when it comes to my opponents playing garbage openings, and I just go like, yeah, whatever. She'll be fine. And then I often find myself that, uh-oh, I should have taken this far more seriously. Okay, another 2,000. Rosbe. Right, let's go d4. I have done e4 already. Let's go d4. Let's see what Rosbe does against d4. I swear my life, it's going to be one, some kind of gambit. c5 or e5. Guaranteed one of these two. Or not? Is he there? Oh, I stand corrected. All right. Queen's gambit declined. It is. Or if Bishop B four and after Bishop G five, it would have been the uh, Ragozin. So we are going now into um, some really cool bananas bishop f4 i just moved my obs onto the next screen so i can clearly see what i'm doing it's really cool that i can do that that now i've got two screens it really has made my life a lot easier as a youtuber except that i'm still not utilizing this function to the best okay da -da -da. Da -da, da -da -da -da. Bishop d3 is going to be the plan, but I think I need to take d5 first. And if takes back, then bishop. What on earth? See, these are the things that I just don't understand. Like, how is this a move that is on your to do list? When you are black here and you have got my course, and so you know that it's center and development. And if you're moving the opening does neither, it's by default 90% likely to be utter garbage. And then he chucks a5 at me. Wow. Just wow. Actually, hold on a tick. Yeah, okay. I did this. Whoa. Okay, don't get me started with that, folks. That is just pain. Rosbe, why would you do that, mate? Okay, we want fun games, right? So let's have fun games. Although, having said that, g4 usually indicates that I'm going to castle here, which is virtually the only scenario where a5 may get some kind of meaning. May. So this was actually, again, a typical me playing way too fast, way too cocky. Nothing unusual. Nonetheless, the idea is valid. I think it, uh, I saw it first in a Botvinnik game, Bot I even remember the opponent, Botvinnik, uh, Alatortsev. 
Botvinnik Kalatorzev. God, I saw that game, I swear to you, when I was like 13 or 14 at the most. Botvin Nikola Tortsev. And although in that line Botvinnik played bishop g5, the outcome was the same, that when g4 was played, black didn't have time to do this maneuver, which would allow my g5 to be rather ineffective. Um, and so now I'm just bringing all the big boys. Maybe g5 is a move here. Um, yeah, look across. I, I will have something there on the ready. But yeah, check out Botvin in Kalatorzev. F5, okay. I will still bring this dude here because I feel like I've got some threats related to take, 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 maybe. Let's put that guy in there. I totally missed knight h5, so now I'm getting insanely cocky and stupid. Actually, I think after knight h5, I may have rook takes, pawn takes, f3, but yeah, I'm getting... Uh, yeah, really silly here. Really silly. And I'm rather tempted now to check if I'm correct on this Botvin Nikola Tortsev thing. Nikola Tortsev chess games. Yeah, there was a game. I don't want to look it up in case there are similarities in the two games and then I will be accused with all kinds of dirties. Okay, that looks really bad because after f3, the knight will have to take, therefore, self-forking himself. Right? Like, that was ultimate harakiri, seppuku. By the way, if anyone in the chat can tell me what the difference is between harakiri and seppuku, please be my educator. So now not only is the knight hanging, but I also opened up the queens finally. All of my pieces look good. So this is something that you find, and I don't want to blow my own trumpet with good chess players, that you look at their positions when they are playing a game, and just go like, how is it that all the time the pieces are on good squares and the opponent seems to have garbage all over the shop? And I experience the same, like when I'm playing against someone way out of my league, I also come across this exact same problem, except that I'm on the black side, and I always wonder of how is it possible that this guy has got all these dudes on awesome squares, and I'm like struggle town. And I don't know, there is not really a good explanation to this phenomenon, other than the fact that um, I guess as you get better and better at chess, your chess sense develops insanely about what goes where and obviously even chess sense becomes layered after a while because to a certain degree if you show a very ordinary position or an everyday scenario to a chess player i mean to an im and to a 2700 gm very often they will say instantly after just a quick glance what the correct move is but then there is an extra set on top of that or an extra layer i was going to say where the positions get far more complicated, far more obscure in terms of who is going which way, when the 2700 still gets like this and goes like this and gets the move right, and then I am like myself would probably get lost. So what do we do now? We wants to play rook h8, I want to attack this, my horse is not attacking, so let's bring the horse here. Yeah? That's that's a logical thinking, hopefully, or logical thinking modeled for you. For you. So we'll take this because I don't want my uh, G file pile up to be ruined. So now these are both hanging. Actually, I disregarded rook h6. Okay, so I think I will go here with the idea of knight h5 check, which I find very fascinating. So this check is utilizing two different pins. As such, it's pretty cool. I reckon. He's gonna take this. No. Okay, so I'll show you the move because I find it pretty neat. So the idea once again is pinned, pinned so you can only take like so and after queen takes, um, he has no re good retake. 
Okay, he wants a rematch. Let's do that. Which allows me now to look up the bot winning Kalator Tsev because we are looking at a very different opening. Uh, what do you want me to play? Let's go my favorite classical. No, this is not doing anything good for us. Um, I should have played e5 there. Bugger! Played too fast. So after e5, the structure is immediately better for me because in this setup, the respective sides want to play for this. And my f pawn is not blocked, but his is. Instead, now I am very, very annoyingly for myself allowing a uh, Marozzi bind, but that's all right. So as the Alatorzev game is still loading. Maybe I will show it to you in the end of the recording. So here we are playing a very, very big main line of the uh, Marozzi bind and he's playing a really, really good game compared to his previous efforts, like his following opening theory, pawn f3, knight d7. Now this is very interesting that black offers this trade. The reason behind this, and a lot of people think that this is bad, but actually this trade is bad for white because that bishop is completely walled in behind pawns. And so now, in some, uh, in some scenarios, black is aiming to trade this bishop for this knight, thus achieving a, what we call a good knight, bad bishop scenario. So note how now I'm trying to put pawns on black, thus making this bishop even less meaningful and also trying to utilize weak dark squares. Now, a4 is an absolute positional shocker very typical of this level a not understanding the purpose of my move and two having no clue what to what the appropriate response to that is so now these pawns are all rigid which means that you can't progress them in a way that when you create a tension you can take back on them with pawns you always have to take back with peace which means that they will become isolated and so now i'm trying to sort of four trades, I suppose this is one way to talk about this. Um, actually, I don't know if this was a good move. I should have played knight c5 first. But now at least I get to model the main point of this whole setup, which is exactly to enter an endgame like this, where my pieces are actually superior to his due to the fact that this bishop is wall behind this masses of mass of pawns now one strategy that often is seen in this structure is e5 96 knight d4 which again highlights the fact that white desperately needs a white squared bishop so usually it goes like knight d5 e5 96 then i trade the knight and then i jump in and then that knight is a boss okay quickly let's have a look at where is view here there is a view button somewhere here I'm just going to copy this whilst the opponent is thinking into an analysis board. But we will definitely be careful not to just start with that. Okay, here we go. So e5 is a plan, but also I have this. Okay, so that is again very questionable. So now I could go takes, takes, e5, rook somewhere at 19, 19. I like that. Let's do that. That's very thematic. Very strange play by him again. Although it allows him occasionally to play for b4, I suppose. And also taking back like this would have allowed me to penetrate on the c file. All right, let's carry out the plan, good or bad. It's actually maybe a bit shaky now. He should have played probably rook d5 there. Okay, so now he wants to go rook here and b4. So I need to be alert. So for example, here rook... Actually, knight d4 comes with a tempo. But even then, this hangs in after b6, b4. So we will just put everything on black. If rook goes there, I can just move the rook. And b4 has been dealt with. So note how I told you that I'm trying to put more and more stuff on black. Here. Yeah? So look at the extreme change that I managed to achieve in the upcoming moves in terms of putting stuff on black. See that? I also traded the bishop for the knight. 
And that means that this bishop is getting worse and worse with every single move. Also, the rooks are utterly useless because he was putting all his eggs in one basket with his b4, which totally doesn't work. And so now I can keep on building, which is really awesome. He disconnected there for a second. So I'm thinking... I'm not quite sure what the most accurate winning plan is because part of me really wants to play f5, but it's unprincipled in the sense that after take take, this bishop gains a bit of a scope. Now I reckon I can go. But I, on the flip side of that thought, I need some kind of opening eventually. Because even if I put a knight here, it doesn't win the game by itself. So then I need to find a target for my superior pieces that they can munch on. I reckon f5 is good. I'm good to go. These pieces are so badly tucked away that there is no need for me to get this knight here. So now I've got king f6, h5, h4. Okay, now that he has put this rook here, I feel like I want to go knight d4 to make it look dumb. One thing to note is that th these pawns are in a way that I really don't want to push them, especially not these guys. Because f4 makes my pawns very rigid, and then this bishop, whilst pretty bad, becomes at least a very reliable blockader. So for the time being, I'm going to hold. And I'm going to gain more space and potentially swing around. Actually, I have to be just a touch careful here. Something that I didn't recognize is valid as an idea here, which is f4. But maybe I can just entirely ignore that and accept the trade which warrants me a pass pawn. Okay, let's just go here. If he allows me, I want to go h4. He did allow it. I guess after h4, he wants f4. Okay, this f4 idea is bugging me a little bit, I will be honest. So I'm thinking, let's just pull back a bit and reshuffle. So now I want rook here, but in order to do that, the king needs to be here. And I like the knight on f4. Don't ask me why. I think I'm making this a little bit more complicated than it should be because I'm talking too much and thinking too little. Okay, so I wanted this. So in this setup, my c8 rook was useless and I probably didn't pay attention enough to that. So here, instead of knight 6 I think I first should have swung the rooks around and then do what I just did with the minor piece. But we are back to the status quo. So now I can again think about playing h4, knight f4 and then start piling up on the g file. I would like to stress that this is by no means an attempt on, oh my god, see that? Look at the pawn structure. That's 2000 there. Uh, it's not an attempt on attacking the king. It's an attempt on piling up a weakness, on a weakness, which happens to be near the enemy king. But as far as I'm concerned, that's actually a downside rather than an upside from my point of view, because that's an extra defender to deal with. I mean, imagine how easy it would be for me to deal with this g2 pawn if this king was here. Right? I just go rook here, rook here, knight here, see ya. Okay, let's go here. Now I'm threatening to take and then knight f4. But almost no legal move allows that trick to work. Because he has got two bishop moves or a rook move back. So, yeah. Now, of course, sometimes I do benefit from the king by being able to execute certain tactics. But I'm not sure if that time has come yet. E.g. knight, knight here, knight takes and then takes and then check, but the king escapes here. Actually, I'm not quite sure what to do now exactly but I like this knight in here because now it sort of kills the rooks maybe it's gonna be d5 next and then bring the king in boy I'm having fun this is good 
This is good. Also, d5 is a sneaky move because if he doesn't take, I can take, take, and ta da! Behold the past pawn. Okay. I'm a bit reluctant to play here d5 because there is a possibility that he could take king d6 and second exchange and take that. And I thought I could address it with rook g5, but then f4 might be a little bit annoying. Did he go f4? Nah, I don't like that move. Again, I could actually think about re activating the rook because this is totally stuck. I could actually play here rook c8 with the idea of a4. Boy chess is beautiful. Although that again allows take take. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to go king up here, which I really dislike for the fact that it puts a king on white, but it covers everything I want to be covered, right? And now I'm going in for a4. God, this is fun. I could also have probably played here d5. But again, with the rook on c8, d5 makes a lot more sense because upon take, take, I can penetrate right away. <clears throat> we pulled him apart so hardcore in this game. Wow. I don't even know which one to go for, honestly. Because d5 takes, takes, bishop f5 is a beautiful mate there. Mm, something tells me to go for this. Feels, I don't know what it feels, safer, I guess, but that's a stupid word to use here. I wonder, I will have to check after this whether d5 or a4 was the accurate move here. Quite noteworthy again that, uh, yeah, he just had no moves left there. Like the poor guy is just going back and forth. Ah, okay, so now I can't take this because of bishop b3. Do you remember what I said about the location of this king earlier on? On the money right away. However, we need an active king. So we do this. Rookie okay, to check, I just go here. I don't care about f5 pawn anymore because we have a passer. So that's totally fine. If he takes this, that's over. So he has to take this. Oh, okay. Okay, I got a bit too cocky here. <clears throat> Admittedly, I did get a bit too cocky. I think that check was bad. Check here, rook takes, rook check, king up. Maybe it wasn't. Okay, this, this got a bit messy in this time scrambles-like scenario. Okay, let's take this. I don't really care about bishop g4 because uh, I've got a lot of pawns to do damage with. And so now again, look at how I'm aiming to put all pieces on black. That is just picture perfect. So the bishop again has no job whatsoever. That's a bit unpleasant, but now I can... Yeah, he can't do anything now. That's the problem. So now I will be rerouting the rook and penetrate... But this was, uh, got a lot shakier in the end than I would have liked it. It could have been such a beautiful uh, demonstration of how to convert, and I really blew it. I'm a bit upset about that. Now, I really like rook c2, because after take, take, bishop takes, I win the bishop on the pin. So that's pretty splendid. And he takes, and then that's when he resigns. GG! Oh, no, that's not when he resigns. Okay. No, no resigns. <clears throat> Still no. Wow. He's testing me if I can give a check me with seven queens. Really, dude? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I want to have a look at this. 
Okay, tak, 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 I didn't want to do that, but whatever. Now it changes to f6 now. With the idea again of dark squared policy. I thought the take was a no brainer. Engine doesn't like it. e5 was good. b6 good. Rook c8 good. f5 second best. No, best. Wow. Looks like I played a pretty decent game here. So d5 was a powerful move here. Wow. How did I miss that? Oh, boy. Ouchie. That was lame. Okay. That was bad. D5. I constantly kept on missing d5. This is so bad chess. And then I just penetrate and win. Wow. Okay. So this was a far worse game than I thought. Constant missing of d5. Shocking. And this king e6 was a bit inaccurate. So d5 was good after all. Fair enough. And a4 was... Oh, no. See, d5 and a4 both neck and neck. But now it seems d5 was the way to go. Fair. I knew that one was better than the other. I just couldn't tell which one. Oh! Wow, I was meant to take this in d5. Two connected pass pawns. I preach that all the time. Bugger! Ah, oh, that was doofy. Yeah, here he should have gone for this because I don't have the two checks. I'm winning, but this is not as clean as I would have liked it to be. Some kind of king c3 with the idea of push, 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 push should be good. Yeah, maybe bring the rook out first and then in. And then ta 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 ta. That should do the trick. Okay. And yeah, the rest was mop up. GG. All right, wasn't as perfect as I was hoping to make it. <clears throat> Let's see how many blunders or mistakes or inaccuracies that was. Just out of curiosity, you guys can't see that. Or can you? Yeah, you can now because I scroll down. No, you can't actually. Triple zero on my end actually. Wow. That's neat, man. I'm happy. Yeah, no mis no mistakes. Oh, one mistake. All right, whatever. Anyway, this was this was good fun. I really really enjoyed uh, these games, and I think uh, we'll cut it short. Oh, well, not really short, but I think that's enough games for one YouTube video. Um, it was good fun. It was good fun. So I hope you guys like it. First one of this set is was quite popular, so I hope that this will remain. So by the way, I made a one one one. So one mistake, one blunder, and one. Uh, what was my blunder? Rook g8. I mean that's harsh, man, to call it a blunder. Oh, I missed knight f4. <laughs> oh my god. I missed knight f4. Are you for real? Oh my word. Okay, I did that on purpose so that I could model the endgame technique. Alright, gentlemen and ladies, now that the humiliation is complete, <laughs> I think it's time for us to call it a day. Thank you for tuning in. Catch you later. Bye.